adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience. Ralph Waldo Emerson When it comes to waiting for baby, even caring for your newborn or raising a toddler, we know that patience is a virtue. To cultivate that virtue, we are going to meander through the complexity of patience as it relates to waiting for your due date, going past your due date, as well as how to get better at having more of it, and some tips to help you know whether what you need is more patience or to take further action on this episode of the Journey to Birth podcast. Imagine walking into your birth room so confident your birth team asks not how, but if they can help you. Imagine transforming the anxiety, the worry, and the uncertainty that you have about your birth right now into the confidence and knowledge that will end everyone's questions about your natural birth and even have them asking you how you did it. Are you ready to learn how you can stop imagining your wonderful birth and start preparing to experience it? Then you are in the right place. I'm Tristan, the creator of the Natural Birth Compass online childbirth education program, and I'm coming to your ears to put notions into your brain, to spark new ideas that become a thought pattern, a thought pattern that empowers you to take control of your pregnancy, your birth, and your life as a parent. My perspective on birth as a childbirth educator has been shaped by my training in Eastern medicine, a deep study of Chinese philosophy, and a lot of observation of the natural world. So grab your mug, fill it with your favorite tea, and let's begin your journey to birth. As you near the end of your pregnancy, it's inevitable that people will start asking you about your due date, or when you think your baby's going to come, like you can see into the future, or they'll start recommending inductions. Now, you've probably heard stories of post-date labors that were induced or a stalled labor that needed to be augmented with Pitocin or Oxytocin to speed things along. And most women who undergo inductions or augmentations believe it was for the health of their baby. But how do you know if that's true for you, if what you need is more patience or to take an action like an induction? It seems almost every week an article shows up in my inbox reinforcing the benefits of induction, some arguing for it as early as 39 weeks, while others are looking at post-term inductions around 41 weeks. In fact, a recent study in Sweden that was published in the British Medical Journal stopped a study early because they were finding a high enough significance in inducing at 41 weeks that they felt it was safer to end the study and induce any woman whose pregnancy goes to 41 weeks rather than keep a control group of expectant management up to 42 weeks. That was in the November 20th, 2019 edition, if you'd like to look it up. And then with the publication of the ARRIVE study in February of 2018, which announced that induction of labor at 39 weeks reduced C-section rates, although it is important to note that it was not found to impact the rates of serious complications for babies. But with all of this research and these studies, you might find yourself wondering if induction really is the best course of action for you and your baby. With all this information, it's hard to make decisions in our current state of prenatal research and the guidelines offered out there for you today. A big part of that is that statistics are not actually as reflective of the reality as the research would like you to believe. The reason is that we don't really know anything about the health of the women or the babies in these studies or the choices that they are making in their pregnancy and births because nothing about the onset of labor is black and white. And that begs the further question that if women are supposed to be birthing babies at exactly 40 weeks or 39 weeks, why does nature have this variability? Why doesn't it always just start on time? Now, I've looked far and deep into this subject because it's one of the leading causes of regret and dissatisfaction in birth. And regret and dissatisfaction in birth is exactly what I want all of you to be avoiding. So after studying back hundreds of years into the history of birth and working with hundreds of prenatal clients, I am going to share the keys to patience in birth and doing everything in your power to encourage your labor to start on time. First, because this podcast is all about increasing awareness of birth through all kinds of perspectives, angles, and experiences, I want to share some passages from an ancient Chinese treatise on childbirth written by Yi Feng, who was an obstetrician of his time. 
Though some of Yifeng's perspective dismisses the effort that labor can require in many cases, he does offer a great service in focusing on keeping women healthy during pregnancy. So by the time they arrive at the end of their pregnancy, their body is prepared for labor and has the endurance needed to experience an efficient and safe labor, which was the whole premise of his treatise. He says, Seeing that man is the most intelligent being in creation, how can we suppose that he should be inferior to other created beings? Now other things are produced without difficulty. Hence herbs and plants bud in their proper season, and the chicken leaves its shell at the appointed time. What occasion is there for any aid being given? These processes are entirely spontaneous, and the application of force is in no case called for. Why, then, should the human species alone be an exception to this rule? He goes on to write, Some ask, If these things be so, how can there be in the world any such thing as a difficult labor? He responds, Sometimes these things will happen, meaning difficult labor. Either because the mother is exhausted, and the nourishment of the womb is not sufficient, and the blood and subtle fluid is not supplied abundantly, or the woman has been sick. So this passage brings us to the keys for doing everything possible for you to have a timely and efficient labor so that you can relax knowing that your labor will start when it's supposed to start. And if it doesn't, you still have done everything possible to be prepared for a healthy birth, even if circumstances arise for which you decide that it's time for an induction. So the key is that your health physical, mental, and emotional, is the biggest factor influencing the timeliness of the onset of your labor. That's right. It's as simple as assessing your own health, which means the onset of your labor and birth are now much more in control. So that's great news, but I know we need to break this down a little bit more. So stick with me here. We're just going to wind around a little bit to get to our goal. So whether or not you and your baby are ready to endure the intensity of labor is dependent upon your overall health. If your health is weak in any area, your body is going to be in a state of too much stress for it to feel safe to go into labor. Physically, your body needs to be able to endure the actual process, so you need to be rested and you need to be well nourished. Think of your labor as a marathon. And actually, a marathon is considered to be a similar amount of exertion as going through labor and birth. In order to complete a marathon, you need to be rested. You need to be eating enough proteins, enough healthy fats, and lots of mineral-rich foods. And you need to be preparing your mindset for the race. If you follow this formula, you're much more likely to start the race off strong and be able to finish if you've taken the right training. However, if you're not getting enough sleep, or not getting nutrient-dense foods, your muscles and cardiovascular system may underperform. You'll go to the race, and maybe you'll finish, but it will be slow and difficult, maybe painful. Maybe you'll have to walk for part of it, or maybe you'll stop partway through and not finish at all. This is the equivalent of a labor that doesn't start, or a labor that does start, but it doesn't build up in intensity, like a stalled labor or a prodromal labor where contractions begin, but they don't ever build up to a full active labor, which is exhausting if it continues for days or even weeks. The same thing applies for cervical dilation that stops before 10 centimeters. These are all signs that the laboring woman has not had the opportunity to restore and recharge before her labor. So what does this have to do with patients? If you're flourishing in your pregnancy, eating the right nourishing foods, getting enough rest, managing stress, and feeling confident about your upcoming birth, then it's likely your baby and your placenta are experiencing the same level of health, and you only need to have patience to meet your little one when he or she is ripe and ready. Instead of promoting labor, sometimes the best medicine is to promote patience while focusing on truly nourishing your health. The last thing that I want to bring to our meandering discussion is a quote from a Japanese doctor, Dr. Tadashi Yoshimura, who wrote Joyous Childbirth Changes the World. He was an obstetrician with a very unique clinic where he saw around a 5% cesarean delivery rate compared to the 33% average of U.S. hospitals. And this is startlingly low and in a good way. 
And unlike Yi Fang, Dr. Yoshimura actually lived recently. He just passed away, unfortunately, in 2017, but he was delivering babies in the same time that we were seeing the rise of cesareans increase in most other countries. He said his secret was keeping women and their babies healthy during pregnancy and giving the laboring mom enough time in a peaceful environment to allow her and her baby to do the work of labor together, eating when she needed to, sleeping when she needed to, and being in a place where she was completely respected. Here's some quotes from Joyous Childbirth Changes the World. Weak contractions mean the conditions are not yet perfect for birthing. All you have to do is wait until they are right. The mechanism of birthing is amazingly delicate and mysterious. If the baby is big, it takes longer to come out. Even if the baby is small, a tight birth canal might impede smooth delivery. Whether the contractions are weak or strong reflects each woman's condition, which is exactly what we've been talking about here. He goes on to say, It is so precise and miraculous that, although I am a doctor, I cannot help thinking it is an act of God. If we leave birthing to nature or God, babies are born at the proper time. That is the truth of childbirth. I hope you enjoyed that bit from an amazingly insightful doctor who helped so many women bring their babies into the world peacefully and with a sense of accomplishment. So that brings us to our takeaway for today. The key to patience is to nourish your body and mind in a way that creates the best conditions possible to support a timely birth. Eat well, sleep well, and create as peaceful and calm an environment as you can. People will continue to ask you about your due date or recommend that you think about inducing, and the articles and studies that try to portray that inducing at 39 or 40 or 41 weeks will continue to show up in our inboxes. But now you can rest assured that you're doing everything you can to support a healthy pregnancy and baby and have a healthy, natural birth at the time it's supposed to happen. Well, my friend, that's it for today. I look forward to spending time with you again next time on Your Journey to Birth. Thank you for listening and being open to new perspectives as we spent this time together. As always, let me know how I can support your journey. If you have topics you want to hear about, guests you'd like to hear from, questions or comments to share, let me know. This podcast is always transforming and you can help shape it into something that helps thousands of families have the best pregnancy, birth, and transition into parenthood possible by leaving a comment or a review or sharing this podcast with others in your life who will benefit from our discussions. Find me on the socials at Natural Birth Compass or email me at info at naturalbirthcompass.com and don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. Wishing you a wonderful journey to birth.